Hello everyone, my name is Rick Jenkins and I am the Standard Plans Publication Engineer in the Roadway Design Office. Today I will cover the changes that were made to FDM 230.4, Wrong Way Signs and Pavement Markings, in the 2023 FDOT Design Manual. First, we'll look at FDM 230.4.1 which is the exit ramp intersections. There was only one change to this subsection and it was to the ninth and last item on the list. The request here was to coordinate with the District Traffic Operations Engineer, DTOE, to determine if the wrong way vehicle detection system and a pair of LED highlighted wrong way signs are required. If the DTOE determines they are required, then we'll follow the criteria that was already established in the previous version of the FDM. So now when determining whether to use the LED highlighted wrong way signs, coordination must take place prior to that determination and it should be documented in the design file. All right, now let's look at the exhibits associated with this language. With the first exhibit, we have the 2022 FDM exhibit and we have the 2023 FDM exhibit. On the 2022 exhibit, there are three sets of wrong way signs shown. There are two static sets and one highlighted set shown. The intent was to have the minimum MUTCD required one set of static signs and have the MUTCD optional second set of static signs. If the LED highlighted signs were used, they would be placed between the two sets of static signs, so the second set would be pushed back another 200 feet. However, after further coordination with the DTOE and the wrong way driving task team, it was determined that this third set is not necessary because not only are the optional second set of static signs being shown, we're going greatly over and above by making the second set highlighted signs. The new 2023 version of the exhibit shows the clarification and states that coordination with the DTOE is required to determine if the second set of signs should be static or LED highlighted. That decision should also be documented in the design file. The next set of exhibits were updated very similar to the last slide. The 2022 version has four sets of wrong way signs. And in the 2023 version, there are the standard two sets of signs, one being static and the other being either static or highlighted, depending on the results of coordination with the district traffic operations engineer. Okay, so the last exhibit I want to discuss regarding exit ramp intersections also shows the 2022 and the 2023 version of the exhibit. This exhibit shows a ramp coming off of a diverging diamond interchange. The same changes I discussed on the last two slides were also made to this exhibit. Okay, now we're going on to divided arterials and collectors. There were a few changes associated with this criteria. Last year, we implemented the wrong way driving on arterials collectors for the signs and the pavement markings. One thing that we found is that when these signs were placed along the roadway into the median, some of the right way drivers were getting confused thinking they were going the wrong way because they thought that the median sign was intended for them. So we had further discussions with the District Traffic Operation Engineers, DTOEs, and the wrong way driving task team and determined that some modifications would be made. We also had a lot of questions on whether things should be unsignalized or signalized. So what we did was revert back to the signs being in the median when the MUTCD requires it when the median nose widths are 30 feet or greater. It was also decided to orient each 
sign face at 45 degrees towards the connection that is intended to regulate. For median nose widths less than 30 feet, the median do not enter and wrong waist signs are optional. It's also stated that each sign will be placed as close to the wrong way roadway as possible while meeting the placement criteria in the standard plan. There was some commentary added talking about median nose widths less than 30 feet, making it clear that the reason they may not be included is to eliminate confusion by the drivers and that these should only be placed at high risk locations and that plans clearly specify that they are placed at a 45 degree rotation. We did also clarify in other locations about unsignalized versus signalized. Now let's look at the exhibits associated with those changes as they are intended to reflect what is written in the criteria. Do keep in mind that these exhibits are recommended configurations of wrong weight, arrow signing and pavement markings and have notes to help understand the criteria. The criteria should all be in the text. First, you will see the 2022 exhibit compared to the 2023 exhibit for wrong way signing and pavement marking at four leg intersections along divided arterials and collectors. And the differences are that the signs shown here in the median are now optional for median widths less than 30 feet. Prior to this, they were optional when the median was less than 10 feet. That was because we were looking at offsets, lateral offsets to the lanes, etc. However, with the additional concerns of possible driver confusion, these are now only available when it's absolutely needed. And we showed in the detail here that the median sign should be rotated at 45 degrees. The next set of exhibits show an example for roadway signing and pavement marking at three-legged intersections along divided arterials and collectors. They show that the signs are optional and these pavement markings are optional for the three-legged intersections in the 2022 exhibit. For the 2023 exhibit, it was decided that these signs are really for a downstream one-way egress and we weren't specifically clear on that and why they were optional. These pavement markings were more beneficial to people who were coming out of the downstream one-way egress and turning the wrong way. As they travel the wrong way, they see the pavement markings right before that opening, and they would then have the opportunity to correct and start driving the proper way. We also clarified in the notes that median nose width is equal to the median width when auxiliary lanes are not present. You'll notice in some of the figures that we call out the median width, others we call out the median nose width, and in the criteria, we also talk about median and median nose width. Well, that concludes my presentation for today. Thank you so much for listening. Dave Amato is our signing and pavement marking expert here in the Roadway Design Office. So if you have any technical questions or questions about the criteria, please contact Dave. If you have any specific questions about the presentation today, feel free to contact me directly. Thanks again.